So this time we're doing things a bit differently here at Coffee with April. Um, we're in Brazil, uh, more specifically with Bela Horizonte um, in Minas Gerais. Uh, we're visiting our partner farmer Bruno at the Esperanza farm. Um, we've been tasting this year's crop and under selection for April sustainable profile. Um, and we've been spending a lot of time with this. And what we want to do here is to kind of, in a very simple way, explain the basics of specialty coffee. Um, and the challenges that comes with that from a farming level and what makes a difference between a really tasty coffee and a not so tasty coffee, a consistent coffee and a not so consistent coffee. Um, so what I have here is basically a bunch of different screen sizes. So the interesting thing here is that when you harvest coffee, especially in Brazil, since the majority of the coffee in Brazil is harvested by machines, which is very different from, for example, Ethiopia or Kenya, where most of the coffee should be harvested by hand. Um, the reason for this is many. Um, the biggest reason is the fact that on the Brazilian farms, the altitudes um, and the terrain is actually allowing you to harvest by a machine, where in some parts in Ethiopia or Costa Rica, or wherever we are in the world, it can be too steep to actually have machines. Um, Plus, labor in Brazil is a lot more expensive than a lot of different places. But what we kind of want to see here and show is that the difference between specialty coffee and not specialty coffee, uh, and the different degrees of specialty coffee, is very often how is the coffee actually sorted. And that's basically what we want to show you here. So, when we talk about green coffee, we talk about different screen sizes, um, and we talk about defects and not defects. So, what we have here is basically a sample of green coffee, 100 grams, uh, harvested this year at the Esperanza farm, um, yellow Ica 2. Um, and what we want to see is, so this is coming from obviously a bunch of different trees, and we want to see how much of this is actually specialty coffee that we would use, um, and how much of this is not. So keep in mind that at a farm, coffee goes through several different processing methods and sortings afterwards, right? So this coffee hasn't gone through any machine sorting whatsoever. Normally what Bruno would do on a lot of other farmers is they will actually sort the coffee uh, using both uh, color machines, density machines, and size machines. Uh, so some defects in coffee is very hard to detect by the human eye more or less. So we rely on machines to do the majority of our sorting for us. But going back to basic, using these old school screens will actually show you um, what we can see when we do the sorting and what the machines actually do for us. So jumping the sample. making a better noise. And what we have here is basically different um, sizes. So we can see it on the side here, where we start with an 18 screen, um, 12 pea berry, 17 screen, 16, 10 pea berry, 15, and, and down onwards, right? So we're gonna start by just taking um, the 17 gram screen. And keep in mind here that this total sample is 100 gram. So what's interesting is how many percentage of the sample is a certain size and what can we actually do with that size. So we're going to get a bit of a closer view here and I will start showing you some, some defects and some stuff we would sort out. But basically what it means here is that the um, AG screen that we're using here uh, is actually the largest beans in the selection, right? So we see some beans here that still has parchments on it. We're sorting those out. We see some broken beans here, which we're obviously going to sort out as well. This darker bean here that you can see is a good example of an immature bean, which is basically a coffee that hasn't gotten enough nutrition to develop properly, which is also going to taste really bad in the cup. Uh, this here is an interesting one. I'm going to show you that on, a, on another one later on, what that actually was. The rest of this is going to be good coffee. 
So we're removing this and we're putting this back in our sample. So I'm bringing up a scale here because this is where it actually gets really interesting. So we have 100 grams of a total sample. And we sorted out the largest beans, which is in this case is the 18 screen. And we sorted out the defects that are in that coffee. And now we basically have a total of 10 grams of coffee. So some of us, especially us when we're selecting our coffee, we're looking for certain screen sizes. And what you want to do is you want to have different screen sizes because it gives you a different uniformity in terms of roasting. Uh, so for example, if you want this Yellowica 2 only in screen 18 and you get 10 grams from a 100 gram sample, that means you need to pick a lot of coffee to be able to actually sort out those screens in the final product. So we're going to continue here. Just to make things a bit more interesting, we're going over to screen 17. And as you can see here, the sample is already way bigger uh, than the 18 screens. Now, some of you might wonder, so what is the difference in quality uh, based on size? Is bigger always better? Um, Kenya, for example, is a country where you sort your coffee exclusively by size, not necessarily by quality. And there's a lot of discussion that um, the larger coffee should be better than the smaller ones. So, we're going to have a quick look here. Same issue here, it matures. Some broken beans. Some of these will also show very clearly in the roasted coffee later on. Immatures is basically what we refer to as Quakers in the roasted coffee. But what we can see here, this initial picking is actually pretty good. So we have quite a high percentage of a really solid good coffee. Now, this is really interesting. We're going to give you guys a close up here. You see uh, a little black part of the bean here as well as a hole going straight in. This is basically done by a bug. We refer to it on a farm level as broca, which is basically an insect eating up the cherry, uh, damaging the plant, damaging the beans in itself. Uh, these can be really difficult to see in the final roasted coffee. Uh, so we want to make sure to avoid that in the initial sorting. Now, a color sorting and a size sorting would most likely not be able to detect that. So that's why, for example, we work with density sorting as well. And density sorting is, in most of the cases, are gonna be able to actually sort this out. So we're gonna measure this as well, just for the fun of it. So we have 10 grams at the 18 screen, and we have 30 grams of the um, the larger 17 screen right here. Normally what we do is that we've decided that we work with the 17 and the 18 exclusively. Um, you could go down all the way to 16, but usually we stay below, we don't go to below 16. On top of that, you have what we refer to as, as pea berries or really, really small beans as well, which often has a higher density and can create a slightly different cup profile and can actually be really good. But as a rule, we actually tend to go for the larger screens. Now, to kind of sum this up, I'm going to show you what comes out in the bottom. Because this is really interesting. We have a closer look on this. You see that we have a lot of broken beans. You see that we actually have a bit of twigs as well, which again, in Brazil, what you do when you uh, pick by machines, depending on, on the, the harvest, depending on the season, uh, you basically pick everything at the same time and then, and then rely very much on the machines to sort this out for you. Um, but the interesting thing here is that when it comes to specialty coffee or any kind of coffee, everything gets sold, right? And this is a kind of a good way just for us to show you that there's a lot of different qualities that can come from the same tree, the same farm, the same harvest of the same varietal, right? And it's up to the farmer to sort this out as good as they can. And the better the sort, the better the quality of the coffee. So especially when you buy larger lots, it's really important that these are impeccably sorted to make sure that the quality is consistent throughout, let's say you buy 100 bags, 150 bags. We're buying 240 kilos uh, with April, which is a relatively small amount or a very small amount. Uh, but even then the sorting becomes really interesting. So what we're actually doing this year is that we have decided to 
only work with the screen sizes of 17 and 16 of the lot that, that's coming out, which is actually creating a, a slightly juicier, more vibrant taste experience. And we found that this year the 18 screen is not necessarily giving us uh, the cut profile that we're looking at. So in the future, we're looking to do even more specific sortings, which is gonna allow us to have better control of the final cup of quality. Now I'm gonna show you guys again, because this is a really good example. Again, a broca, right? So basically an insect eating up the coffee. Now, this is very hard on a farm level to actually protect its for. Uh, you can use, for example, insecticides or, or other pretty strong chemicals, but this can actually affect the quality of the coffee. So quite often you don't want to do this. But in every kind of sample that you're working with, you're always going to have, basically regardless of the farm, regardless of where you are, even though the initial sorting is going to be the hand picking, uh, originally, you're always going to have a different kind of quality. Here's also a really good example of a, of a very severe broca. So that will taste really, really bad. Very kind of phenol and extremely intense. Uh, and can basically ruin a, a, a whole cup of coffee because of that single little, uh, little bug bite more or less. So basically the key thing to wrap this up is that the sorting of the coffee is the most important part. And you can pick coffee, let's say you pick coffee from, um, let's say 100 trees, then you can have several different qualities within that. You can have an 85, you can have an 82, an 80, down to 75, down to 60, uh, depending on how that coffee is sorted. So the more time you invest in buying well-sorted coffee, uh, the better the quality. And this is in the, end, in the end what kind of separates what we do in the, in the very high end specialty coffee world uh, versus what, what other do in the specialty coffee world or versus what you might find in, for example, supermarkets, right? Um, so it's very important that you always sort the coffee as proper as you can and you work with farmers that wants to go through that sorting process with you uh, because it's going to make your roasting better, it's going to make your coffee more consistent um, and overall, we're going to, using this, we're also going to be able to discover new cup profiles, which is really the interesting part. So in the future, you might be able to actually release a 15, 16, 17, 18 screen on the same coffee to just to explore what comes with that, right? Um, so overall, it's a really interesting process and I think it's a really clear way to show the importance of, of what we do or what the farmers do on their level in terms of sorting the coffee because that's really the difference between a good and a bad coffee. So that was basically everything from Brazil. Um, as always, thank you guys for watching and if you have any comments, any thoughts, just write them down here and we're always happy to get back to you guys. Thank you.